It's another Saturday, and as usual, we're much obliged to have you join us on the program Politics Today on independent television and radio. Our sincere apologies, we're coming rather behind time due to some unforeseen circumstances. But we're here now, and that's all that matters. We thank you for your understanding in today's program. No doubt the 2023 presidential uh, election has come and gone in a sense, but there are some contentious issues. INEC has declared the APC candidate, Ahmed Bola Tunibu, uh, the Asiwaju himself, as the president-elect. But a section of the Constitution uh, has thrown us certain issues that is uh, giving some legal luminaries different interpretations. We're talking about section 134 of the Constitution, which of course provides for the basis for the declaration of a president after an election has taken place. It talks about the percentage of votes that must be garnered by whoever wins. It talks about the number of states and uh, all of those technical jargons uh, will get to understand in the course of the program. Has INEC done the right thing in line with the Constitution? These are many questions we'll be asking. <coughs> And then in the build up to uh, Saturday, uh, the 11th day of March, House of Assembly election, of course, serious supremacy battle amongst political parties in the state. And there's every reason the governor of the state should be concerned. You want to know more about these and lots more. Stay with us on the program as usual. Our studio line will be open so you can call and be part of the conversation. Uh, you can also stretch the conversation further using all our social media platforms at ITV Radio NG on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, on Instagram. You can follow me as well on my personal Twitter handle at Duke Okosun. But let's meet our panelists here. Former NBA Bini branch chairman is here with us, Barrister Ede Asenogwan. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much, Sonny. Good morning, listeners at home. We also have with us in the studio the Executive Director, Canvassers of Democracy and Rule of Law, is also the Senior Pastor of Hill City International Christian Center. Thank you for joining us, Reverend Lou Martins. Thank you, and good morning to uh, viewers and listeners. Let, let's get uh, into the groove, as we always say. Uh, Basta, Ede uh, let me start with you. I mean, you are the lawyer here, and uh, you are the learned one amongst us here. Uh, we actually uh, reached out to Barista uh, Obakwan, Obakwan to be here, and he did promise that he will be here. So we hope he gets here on time to also the part of the discussion. So give us um, this whole debate around the Constitution, particularly Section 134, in relation to the election that just held with the declaration of a president-elect. Well, thank you very much, Sonny. Um, the, the Constitution is clear um, while dealing with the election of anybody to the office of the president. Um, I, I, I had to bring the copy of the Constitution here so that uh, we don't speak of our own. Um, the one that is in contention is Section 134, subsection um, 2 of the Constitution. I will just read and then we'll speak to it. Section 134 says, a candidate for an election um, to the office of president shall be deemed to have been duly elected where there have been only two candidates. Then, no, let's go to um, 2, 134, subsection 2. A candidate for an election of the, to the office of the president shall be deemed to have been duly elected where there have been two, more than two candidates for the election. Mm. Now, the Constitution makes provision for where there is one candidate. The Constitution didn't say such a candidate should be returned unopposed. It still gave condition that there must be yes and no votes. It talks about where there are two candidates and then gives the conditions. And then in subsection 3, it talks about where there are more than two candidates, like the recent election we just had. Okay. And I said, in such a situation, the person to be declared president a, he has the highest number of votes cast at the election. And B, he has not less than one quarter of the votes cast at the election, each of at least 
two thirds of the states in the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Now, what is causing the debate and the argument yes. is the use of the word and, mm. especially in um, subparagraph B. First, there is an and after the A, which says he has the highest number of votes cast at the election. Mm. It didn't end there. He now say and. Why is it that the constitution said the first and seemed not to be a problem? Because we have accepted that apart from just having the highest number of votes cast, there is another condition introduced by the first and. And what was introduced was that he has not less than one quarter, which is 25% uh, of the votes cast at the election, each of at least two thirds of the states of the federation. States of the federation. And he now added another and to now say, and the federal capital territory, Abuja. Okay. So some people are saying, the interpretation that is being given to it, there are two schools of thoughts. The first is saying, that this and means that you must, to be declared president, have 25% of the votes in Abuja. Absolutely. In other words, Abuja is mandatory. Even if you have gotten 25% of the votes in at least two thirds of the states. The other contention is that no, Abuja is not special. Insofar as you have 25% of the um, more of the one quarter, one third of the votes in at least two thirds. In other words, if you have 25% um, in any 24 states. Okay. You are good to go. You are good to go. So these are the two sides of the argument. And of course, I know this is going to get at to, as far as to the Supreme Court for their interpretation. But for me, as a person, my personal opinion is that and is in interpretation whether in English or in law, it's a conjunctive uh, word. It brings in another. And now we, are, we need to look at the intention of the, the, the legislature. People are contending that, oh, Abuja, there's nothing special about Abuja. This is by virtue of the provision of Section 299. Now, if you also look at the provision of Section 299, it says the provision of this constitution shall apply to the federal capital territory Abuja as if it were one of the states of the federation and accordingly. Now, <laughs> the constitution in one breath is saying that Abuja should be treated as a state. As a special status. Yes. Mm. Now, the question is, some people have contended that, look, Abuja does not have a special status. Okay. So there is no requirement that says you must win Abuja to become the president. Mm -hmm. And they take um, solace in the provision of Section 299. I beg to differ from this position. My position is that the ant is conjunctive. Abuja enjoys special status. So it's not like one of the states. It's not like one of the states. And I will tell you why. There are other provisions in this constitution that is so clear about that. Mm. First, if we go to the said one section, um, 134, um, to be. The draftsmen need not even add Abuja. If, for instance, they were not going to give it a special status. status. It could have ended, he has not less than one quarter of the votes cast at the election, each of at least two thirds of all the states yes, of the federation. federation. Because section 299 has said it should be treated as a state. Mm. So if you are arguing and your contention is that, oh, by virtue of section 299, Abuja is a state like every other state. state, then they could have just ended in at least two-third majority of the 25 percent of the two-third majority of the states of the federation. Okay. You don't need to add the and Abuja as a condition. Now, uh, other provisions of the constitution that shows that Abuja is special. First, in interpreting, section 299 deals with Abuja specially. If you look at it from chapter 4, section 297, 299, all those sections are dealing with Abuja specially. Now, let me tell you why I say Abuja enjoys a special status. Abuja, for instance, is the only, well, it's not a state, it's federal capital territory. The governor of Abuja is the president. Hmm. The commissioners, the mini is, is the minister. 
Abuja has only one senator. Unlike the other states, they have three. In each of the states of the federation, each state has their own independent electoral commission mm. that conducts election into the local government councils. It's In Heineck. Abuja, it's INEC, the national body that conducts the election into their local government councils. Mm. Each of the states have their um, executive council of states. In Abuja, it is the federal executive council that, that, that decides issues concerning Abuja. The legislative arm of Abuja is the National Assembly, which is made up of the Senate and the House of Reps. No other state enjoys that. So laws are made concerning Abuja by the National Assembly. Mm. Who are members of the National Assembly? Representatives from all other states. So to argue that Abuja, by creation of our constitution, does not enjoy a special status mm. is wrong. First, you see a whole section, a whole chapter, almost a whole chapter of the constitution dedicated, dedicated, to, dedicated Ab to Abuja, Abuja as a federal capital territory. Mm. And you find that the president is the, ex the, the executive, uh, well, what do I call it now? The He's, governor the, as a what? The, the executive in charge, in charge of, of Abuja. Abuja. No other state enjoys that. Yeah. So for us to say, uh, because if you say the and, means that you must get 25% of the votes in Abuja. Yeah. We make Abuja to enjoy a special status. I say Abuja already enjoys a special status by virtue of the provisions of the Constitution. All right, let, let, let me pursue there. Um, I'm sure we're making a lot of sense to you with uh, these expose on uh, the contentious uh, uh, section 134 of the Constitution. I mean, our legal icon here has been able to expansion on, on that and bring in more section of the constitution to buttress this argument. Whatever, look, Marty, let me, let me come to you, not as a lawyer, but uh, as someone who has been following all of these issues. <laughs> <laughs> who has been following all of these issues, particularly with the way the election went, the role INEC played, um, results have been announced, winners have been declared, uh, losers may be licking their wounds and thinking of the next line of action. What's your perspective? Because I've uh, listened to several legal luminaries um, express their views on this uh, section of the Constitution. Uh, let's, let's get your take. I'll, I'll come back to that. Thank here. you very much. You know, when you started, and you were apologizing for starting with you, you almost reminded me of Professor Mahmoud. You no, know, the elections came, uh, the result came late too. <laughs> and he also apologized because there were also unforeseen uh, circumstances. <laughs> but I think that I should off my cap for our learned guest here because very just now, he can't be my learned friend. <laughs> oh, but, um, I quite know he's a Christian. I can promise him a bottle of water after the event because I know he doesn't take anything but, but water. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not sure I've seen, even from the best of, um, you see the silk they call it, a very senior advocate, I'm not sure I've heard an explanation that is as detailed as his own. And for me, he has put the matter to rest. You know, before we came on air, I was saying that for the first time, the word and has suddenly become a complex word. Mm. But fortunately, when I first ever got into university, I got into university to read accounting. And accounting has, especially financial accounting, they have a special way of setting questions. It will begin by saying, answer question one and any other three. <laughs> In other words, no matter what you do, you must answer question, question number one. one. If you like answer the question, the three questions, either you decide to answer question one, the three questions first, and then go answer question one later, or you start with question one and answer the three questions later, but you examine her. When he picks up your paper, the first question he looks for, question whether it's at the beginning or at the end, is question one. For me, the Federal Capital Territory looks like question one. Mm. We have 25% in 24 states. states. But it's almost like saying that you must have 25% in Abuja. Abuja is question one. It's compulsory. Mm. Then you can choose any other of the 36 states of the Federation. And then people were specific enough. If I say, go and call a boy, you probably can come with any boy. But if I say, go and call the boy, you probably say, which boy? But if I say, go and call Frederick, you see, I'm getting more specific. Then you know, if there are two Frederick, you say, which Frederick? Otherwise, you know who to call. They didn't just say any state. They listed it to say the Federal 
capital territory. Like he said, they could have just said you can win any 24, 25% of any 24 states. But they said you might win 25% and they specifically now mentioned the federal capital territory. My as, an addition. as an addition. My thinking is this. For the drafters of the constitution, because of the heterogeneity of Abuja, it looks like a, con a convergence point. It's not a convergence point of the Igbos. It's not a convergence point of the Hausas or the Benis. It's a convergence point for all Nigerians. So they want to be able to have a candidate that has also taken Abuja. Abuja will not be like a microcosmal reflection of the macrocosmal Nigeria. In other words, if you can do well in Abuja, it means that you will have had the spread that will have been required in the other federations of Nigeria. Otherwise, you might be required to have a simple majority in the North and you'll have won the election. But they want to be sure that, quote and unquote, you are politically friendly and are politically at home. So that if you win the election, you, there will not be misgivings to say, oh, those guys didn't uh, vote for me, so I'm, I'm not going to work for them. You can't afford to treat Abuja like that. Because like he has said, Abuja is the epicenter. The, ladies, the people who legislate for Abuja are the you know, federal legislators. The, the minister, Abuja does not have a governor. He has a minister who is a member of the, of federal, the executive federal Executive Council. Council. And who is the head of the Federal Executive Council? The head of the Federal Executive Council is the president. So for me, it you know um, as appears to the matter appears to rest itself. But you know, this is Nigeria, where political interests will give different colorations to it. But again, again, that the beauty of this is that it's just like what happened when um, President Umaru Musa Yaradua. It's still politics today on independent television and radio. We have with us in the studio Barrister Edea Senogwa, who is the former NBA chairman, Benin Branch, as well as uh, Reverend Ulu Martins, who was actually uh, giving his perspectives on the contentious issue of Section 134 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in relation to the just concluded presidential election. Reverend Ulu Martins, just, just quickly. Thank you, I'm also yeah. happy that. So I'm, I'm just trying to say that. The drafted, you know, because I'm sure the lawyers, you know, have different rules, mischief rule, golden rule. So the, I'm sure that the thinking of the drafters of the constitution is that Nigeria, federal capital territory, is a smaller Nigeria, like a circle in a circle, mm. because it's supposed to welcome you know, everybody. everybody. The aborigines of, of Abuja, for instance, you cannot claim that it is the Zango Kataf people who own Abuja. You can't say it is the Igbo. So it looks like it's a no man's land. So that's my thinking to so say the drafters of the constitution think that you know what. If you can have a reflection of evilness in Abuja, it means that you have the potential to have that potential evilness in the remaining part of Nigeria. So why? Uh, in, because in English at that time, I thought that the word and was, in, was to mean inclusive. It didn't mean that it was to tag along. It means that it was to be different. If I say there are two people on air, there's Sonny Duke and... Barrister Ede. So I'm saying that two of them are different from each other. But it looks like, because now I have a wife. I am, we are Mr. and Mrs. It means that Mr. is different from Mrs. Mrs. Because otherwise, you could have easily addressed me as Reverend Comrade, if you understand what I mean. If you say Reverend Comrade, it means that I am the same uh, person. If you say Reverend Doctor, as the case may be. But when you say, Pastor and pastor missus. The assumption is that there is one who is pastor and the other one who is um, pastor missus. That English appeared, you know, simple enough. But I was trying to say that this is the first time we're also going to test this. We've never had a situation where a presidential candidate didn't have 25%. Just like in Kogi State, we didn't have a situation where an election was going to go by second ballot, and then the man who held the ticket died. So they didn't know what to do because he hadn't won the election. It was not a candidate. It was not a, you know, governor, governor elect. elect. So the deputy at that time couldn't just, you know, take over from him because it wasn't, it was, that joint ticket had not been established. Okay. So I'm sure that in a few days, there will be different interpretations. No, it's, it's already happening already. I mean, it's happening. The different interpretation. I mean, we just got from... Today. I'm sure that... If, I, I'm sure that... And... <laughs> you probably be the most popular <laughs> word. <laughs> All right, Vice Eddie. Um, from the election outcome, the president-elect has been 
has emerged, I mean, from the declaration by INEC. Um, the section of the Constitution you read to us um, show that whoever emerges should have uh, about 25% of vote cards in 24 states. And then Abuja. In this case, the one who has emerged didn't have 25% of the vote cast in Abuja. Um, by reason of the fact that the one that has emerged or has, has been declared as a president-elect won 25% of the vote cast in 24 states, that can suffice, as it were. We've heard people like um, uh, Femi Falana SA and saying that Abuja is inclusive of that particular uh, you know, uh, criteria that has been met in this election. So what should INEC have done, in your opinion? Well, again, like I said, there are two perspectives, mm. two uh, school of thoughts. INEC clearly has gone with one. Because um, from what I gathered, the president elect, as declared, um, had about 25% spread in 30 states, in which case they are saying, having gotten 24, then and you even had more than 25, oh. because Abuja was supposed to just make it 25. Okay. So having gotten more than 25, you are good to go. But we are saying, and I think, because at the end of the day, as lawyers, we will always have our divergent opinions as far as English language is the language used to write it. <laughs> you know, so um, if you make a sentence now, two, three different lawyers can give you two different interpretations of that sentence that you have made. Mm. It's that complex. So as many lawyers as there are, they will have their different opinions on this point. But you see, and that's why it, at the end of the day, it will be the courts that will now look at it and say, oh, this um, interpretation seems uh, more plausible. Now, he has said, oh, Abuja is inclusive. I beg to differ because if Abuja is inclusive, like I said, why not use including Abuja? Mm. All right? You could have said including Abuja. Or you could have said in at least 25 uh, states of the Federation. And end there. Yeah. Why mm. use the word and to add Abuja? So, like he has rightly explained, Abuja from the beginning was conceptualized, you know, as a microcosm of Nigeria. And that's why, like I said, there is a fed Federal Executive Council cannot legislate. You recall there when there was crisis in Edo when they said, oh, let the National Assembly begin to legislate mm -hmm. for Edo State. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go to court on that point. The Federal Executive Council cannot begin to act on behalf of any state or implement laws on behalf of any state. Just the same way the National Assembly cannot do the same for any state. But they can only do so for Abuja. And like I said, the National Assembly is not made up of people from Abuja yeah. as a territory okay. defined. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is made up of, we have our senators there. We have, Lagos have senators. In fact, I'm using Senate because that's why we have 109 members in the Senate. Three, three from each of the states. Mm -hmm. Abuja, has, just Abuja one. has one. That's what made it 109. If you take three from the 36 states, it's 108. Abuja has one. So you find that most of the senators who make laws affecting Abuja, majority of the, it's only one that is even from Abuja, or representing Abuja as it were. So in other words, when an issue or a law to be passed concerning the federal capital territory of Abuja, my own senator in Edo State is making contributions. The one from Lagos is making contributions. The one from Sokoto is making contributions. Even they can outvote the one from Abuja. So how dare can we say that Abuja is just on its own? It's not in a special class. Abuja, of course, is in a special class. So for me, my own, like I said, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. which is subject at the end of the day to what the courts are going to say. But I'm saying, sir, if we remove politics, if we remove um, interest, yeah. and we try to be objective without looking at parties involved or candidates involved, mm. I'm sure most of us would have agreed on the simple meaning of and, which is just conjunctive. Okay. But because politics is now involved, 
If we interpret it like this, it will favor it will favor party A. If we interpret it like this, it will favor the other party. So everybody is going to decide that favors them. So what would have been the best option for INEC under the circumstances? Revolu Martins. Uh, before, okay, no, let me just get <laughs> yeah. you. Now, because your, the question yeah. is also clear. Mm. The question is clear. It says that if nobody is elected in line with this provision, yes. INEC, let me read it. It says that. Um, in a default of a candidate duly elected in accordance with subsection 2 of this section, there shall be a second election in accordance with, this, with subsection 4 of this section at which the only candidate shall be. So if you didn't meet this criteria, yeah. subsection 2, then the, 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 there shall be another election, a second election. That's a rerun. A rerun. Mm. There shall be a rerun. And now says it shall be between, listen, the candidate who scored the highest number of votes at any election held in accordance with the said subsection 2 of this section, highest number of votes, one among the remaining candidates who has a majority of votes in the highest number of states. So, however, that where there are more than one candidate with majority of votes in the highest number of states, the candidates among them with the highest total of votes cast at the election shall be the second candidate for the election. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at these other provisions, they did not say, and Abuja, or including Abuja. Mm -hmm. They are not just talking of the highest number of votes, indeed the highest number of states. Yeah. Spread. So if a candidate, why did they not include Abuja, Abuja, Abuja in this other uh, section? Deter exactly. In determining who should be a candidate for the runoff. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay. So that's All the... Right. Revolu Martins, yeah. Is this a hasty declaration uh, by virtue of the provisions of the Constitution, not what we feel, not what we think, based on the provision of the Constitution? Is this a hasty declaration? I remember in the Bible, Samuel is to do a sacrifice, and King Saul is waiting for Samuel to do a sacrifice. There's pressure on King Saul, and he feels that by the law, the sacrifice cannot wait till 7 o'clock. By 7 o'clock, the animal must go down, otherwise it will be still. So what does King Saul do? King Saul quickly carries the um, animal. Just pause. Maybe I should do mention it. Okay, just go on. Go yeah, on. So what does King Saul do? King Saul takes the animal and slaughters it. As soon as he does that, Samuel appears. And Samuel told, tells him, what was the hurry about? Obey is, the obey is better than sacrifice. And I said all of that to say, you would have expected that Einek wouldn't have been in a hurry. They would have subjected this matter to several legal interpretations. And there have been instances like that. In Edo State, for instance, the first election that made, the first time Maturide came on board, that, that election had a rerun. Because they said the people who had not voted, the margin between the person who won the election, the, the areas that were cancelled, the margin was still larger in such a way that if they contended for those areas, the possibility is that the result, could yeah, be the result can be obtained. That's what happened in Oshun State. You know, there was a rerun in Oshun State mm. because there were certain constitutional provisions you know, that were not met. So you'd be wondering to say, what was the um, hurry of INEC to um, declare? Tinubu as president today. It seemed to me that INEC is saying what the typical politicians do. Because we saw it on video where one of the aspirants or candidates say, grab it, take it, do whatever you can. And then we hear politicians say, do whatever you can, let them go to court. So it seemed like INEC is saying, you know what, let's push it away from our chest. Let them go to court. And you know when a politician, especially the one who, quote unquote, won the election, say, let them go to court. For him, he's trying to say, look, even the court is not as straightforward. You can lose a case in Nigerian court by technicalities, whatever that means, and yet to understand it. So it means that the court will leave the substance of the matter and say that instead of you to dance from the right leg, you dance from the left leg. You dance very well, but your first step should have been, you know, the left leg. So it doesn't matter whether you dance very well, you took the wrong leg, you know, in doing so. So I think that the less of sort technicalities, the more we're able to deal with the matter. So I... I, I I'm wondering what the hurry, you know, was about since there were such contentions. Incidentally, one of those who has advised INEC had always been Barrister Mike Iguini. And I watched Iguini's interview. 
And he didn't even was sounding a note of warning in that interview to say he's telling Anek that Anek can't declare a winner in so far as this contentious 25 percent in Abuja was still hanging in the limbo. So, what did Guinea think? Guinea thought that we should have exhausted the legal options. We have spent hundreds of billions for these elections, and the candidate had been declared. So, you can imagine. If you go to court and the court says what INEC should have declared from the beginning, money should have been spent going to court, people time will have been wasted. Somebody may have been even declared president and he might be using he may have been using state apparatus to suppress whatever he can suppress. Supposing the court now decides to say, you know what, go for a wrong. What would that do to INEC? It will already people are feeling that INEC is biased. That's the feeling across board. But you can imagine a court takes that decision. That INEC in this in, in this this INEC in question will almost not be competent. Is that what the lawyers do? The lawyers will say, look, I not I don't trust that this judge will deliver judgment in our favor. So we ask the judge to recruit himself. Yeah. How does the parties now go into an election with Professor Mahmoud Yakubu as the umpire if the judge the court decides you know otherwise? So because why they say in an election, it's not just free. And fair is seen by all. The to question is by all to be free, fair, and credible. Incidentally, even those who say they have won election, I'm not sure that they see the contest to have been free, fair, and credible because they themselves have refused to celebrate for reasons best known to the and I can understand. Some 30 no, years they celebrated in Kano. <laughs> no, no, you can Kano, except we're now giving Kano a special status like a <laughs> FCT. <laughs> if they should have celebrated, they should have celebrated in Lagos, where the man says he's the landlord of Lagos. But I can tell you what happened. 30 years ago, I wrote GCE. I didn't pass. My father was 10, so I was afraid of facing my father. So I gave my father fake result. <laughs> Everybody was happy. I couldn't be happy. <laughs> but only me, no. <laughs> only me, no. So my friends would come in, excited, they would drive it to my house. I said, oh, they got this, they got this. I said, how did they, what did they get? I said, I got uh, two A's. I'm forced, but you are not happy. I mean, it's not a new thing, I say. <laughs> <laughs> Only me knew that the result I gave to my father and the one I was pasting that I was taken around was fake result. So it is difficult to be happy hmm. when you know what you did uh, last okay. night or last summer, as okay. the case may be. Uh, right. I, I think I should just add here. Yes, um, please. Because do. there was something like um, almost a prophetic advice to INEC. By who? Um, um, what's his name now? A former president of the MB, oh, Lisa Agbakoba SA. He wrote a letter to INEC chairman requiring an interpretation of the provision of section 134, subsection 2, before the election. Their position on it. Yes, now look, what is the position mm, mm. of the FCT with regards to this section on who can be declared a president? I'm not sure Anek took cognizance or responded to it. Because he felt that issue needed to be determined. Yeah, that was even before yeah. the I've election. Been I've been issue. That was even before the election. And, you know, it has never been an issue since we've been uh, doing elections. It has never been an issue. No, it hasn't. It has not. So for the first time, it is becoming an issue. And it was like uh, Olisa Abakoba was prophesying that this is going to be an issue in this election. Anek, let us know your interpretation in the event that one of the candidates mm. or who wins it does not score 25% of the votes in Abuja. It was not attended to. And but here today, that's where yeah, we are. That's that's a subject it has now become the subject. So uh, one wonders whether the Leonard Seek was there. Uh, I don't know where he got that uh, this thing from. But today, it's become, it has become the issue. Okay, but this is, this is uh, um, something that the courts must uh, do justice to. Uh, from the way things are at the moment. Um, it is a case of us keeping our fingers crossed and see how all of this pans out before ultimately we know exactly the direction to go. But as we speak at the moment, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been declared president-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria by virtue of uh, the declaration by INEC uh, on Wednesday earlier this week. And uh, as an ancillary to that, on the 11th of March, we'll be having the state houses of assembly election and governorship election, especially for states that are not within the 
they call them the off cycle uh, election. The state, uh, I think a number of state, Oshun State, and uh, several of them. But they mentioned Edo, and of course Edo State. Edo State. <laughs> in fact, that's exactly where I'm going. Thank you very special much. Special status. Uh, special status, <laughs> because um, it's actually where the supremacy battle is for uh, the election bid for the 11th of March. Edo State, and that's because. The results from the presidential and national assembly election has altered a lot of things. It's now uh, the PDP is on the one hand, the APC is on the other hand. Of course, the new force to be reckoned with in Nigeria politics, the Labour Party, is on the other hand. Uh, Olu Matis, let me let's start with you on this. Um, this is such a big, big challenge. I know that for the better part of the present administration. Uh, there have been questions about the status of the House of Assembly, the independence of the House of Assembly, the constitutional requirement in terms of the number of people in the House of Assembly that, for the views of some people, hasn't been remembered. Anyhow, uh, the legislative business has been going on. Uh, for some people, this is just opportunity, one opportunity they are waiting for to put things in the right perspective. Let me get your take on this. Yes, thank you very much by how the National Assembly elections have panned out. PDP is the opposition party in the state by the configuration of the National Assembly. APC seems to have now have more members in the National Assembly. They have two senators, Edo Central and Edo North. In Edo South, Labour has one senator. And that same configuration demonstrates itself in the National Assembly. APC presently has the majority, followed very closely by the Labour Party, because the Labour Party, by the election, seems to have gathered, has a do south in its kitchen. What it means is that the governor's PDP is highly disadvantaged. You don't forget that the, governor, the governor's PDP had been a battle between the new PDP and the, the legacy, legacy PDP. PDP. So if we now say the candidate that the court recognizes was the governor's PDP, it means that for the want of what to use, the governor's PDP is in a disadvantage. If they go into that election, the way it is now, it is safe to say that the governor's PDP is going to remain in the disadvantage. The flip side of it, however, is that the presidential election was also a personality election. Not a party election. It was a personality election. Especially for those who call ourselves obedient. It was more about Peter Obi. Especially, I mean, for the Labour Party. So now that Mr. Peter Obi is not in the ballot box, now that... Allow me to put it that way, Mr. Tinubu is not in the ballot box, Mr. Tuki is not in the ballot box. It has become a little bit more personal. Each constituency may be, allowed, may be going to the election and choose the candidate that has best connected with the candidate. We, are also, we, we're not, we're not, we do not also have a governorship candidate here. You see why APC should have won a quote-unquote a victory that resonates with every, everybody. Because the flip side of it is that people feel that APC have robbed them. So they are likely going to enter into this election, quote unquote, with cutlass in their hand, not only not wanting to vote for APC, but attempting to cut APC out of uh, the ballot paper in our tour. Everybody, everywhere you go, everybody is aggrieved. You enter into public transport, people thought that the APC was the problem of Nigeria. Well, it looks like APC now has a colluder, a, a me, somebody who has colluded with it, which is INEC. So people are going to go out, at least as far as Edo South is concerned. I don't know how Edo Central is concerned. I'm not sure anybody's going to see APC in Edo South as far as the papers you know, okay. are concerned. Okay. Now, how the governor will leverage on that is left you know, to him. Maybe he would have alliances and all of that because he can't afford. And in this, uh, we can't afford in this state. What is the best option for Edo people, in your opinion, as far as the... Thank you very much. I was, I was going to enter. I was, indeed, yes. we can't afford. For me, I'm a development person. Outside my little political bias. I, want, I don't want crisis in Edo state. 
I don't want the roof of the House of Assembly removed. <laughs> I don't want people who go to the legislative quarters to drive people out. I don't want chaos. I don't want fights. The governor is not going for a third term. So if you ask me for my, for my personal opinion, my personal opinion is we endured perhaps a worse administration, perhaps Buhari, and we escorted him out. So my own would have been, look, let's look for a way to help the governor get a friendly house of assembly so that the money that he's using to do whatever he is doing and those who are, in, who are in PDP can explain to us what the governor is doing. But the ones that he's doing, those monies will not now be diverted into crisis. For goodness sake, sir. I don't want anything that, I don't want to be part of anything that will allow the lions and the tigers return to our streets. Because we saw gun running and gun trotting in broad daylight. I don't want a governor that will now pander to one big masquerade that he now consistently you know goes to bed you know if you are a, my friend on facebook that i'm not a fan in the manner of speaking of the present uh, okay. governor i've even aligned more with labor party but i like to see the bigger picture sure. to say look can we just do it in such a way that you can escort just escort this governor safely he's not going to reinvent himself mm. he's not he doesn't have a thought time okay. in so that there will not be chaos you can just quietly just like the way Buhari is, we'll just quietly... Is out. Uh, yes, and okay. the man. Let me, let me, if, if we say uh, in the presidential election, it was more about personalities, not political parties. Um, it, don't you also see that possibility of personalities uh, being involved in the House of Assembly election, particularly for Edo uh, State? And then, of course, the fate of the governor is also a major issue in that light. Uh, yes, I, I, I want to alter what uh, my brother here just said. Yes, the presidential election was about personalities. Um, the person of Obi seemed to be the issue. Everybody was Obi, Obi, obedient and all of that. But it eventually rubbed off on the party. Mm. It did. People who voted, the person who won <laughs> Senate in Edo South, he didn't win on the basis of his personality. They also knew they were not voting for Obi. They were just looking for Papa Pekin, Papa Mama Pekin, yes. Because there was anger. We're saying the same thing more or less. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so, no, I'm saying it's I'm saying like it was the person, it was yes. the Obi personality. Yes, yes. 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 Exactly. That's what I mean. So, so, at the end of the day, many people didn't know who the senatorial candidate was. Yeah. But they voted. They anyway. just voted because, oh, now this one be Obi party. That was it. So, Yes, now we are coming to the state. There is PDP, there is APC, and there is Labour. You are very correct. PDP, which is the ruling party in the state, has a challenge, major challenge. There is division in the house. Mm. Division, major one. Uh, uh, Sonny Dugri were one of those who called me immediately after the Supreme Court judgment. Mm. And he said, ah, they've given judgment. The governor's side has won. I don't know if you remember what yeah. I told you. Yes. I said both sides lost. Mm, mm, both sides indeed. lost. Yeah. There is no way any, any side can celebrate victory. We're seeing it now. Two weeks to election, and then you think you have won, and then the other people will just come and support and you and make you, you and, and hug put you, you and in the office you. when they have lost out. So we are seeing it. The other side, if, for instance, the legacy group, have supported the governor's side, they would have put up a better showing in Edo Central. Absolutely, absolutely. They would have put up a better showing in Edo, uh, North. Edo North, even though there is a major issue in the person of uh, the senatorial candidate. So in this coming election, the way I see it, people are angry. First thing we must determine is whether the people are going to be disenchanted, whether yeah, they will still be, come out. Vote our party. Without, with the same zeal mm. and enthusiasm they displayed like two weeks ago. Okay. They may not say, well, <laughs> we came out after all we did in the rain, in the sun, um, staying overnight and yes. all of that sacrifice. Yes, yes. It still went like this. Why should I now bother myself? Mm. So if that plays out, then there's a major problem. But if, on the other hand, the people are galvanized in such a way to say, no, we are not going to give up on this. We must finish what we have started. started. Just the same way. I mean, the Labour Party people now, they are also going to go to the field and campaign. Yeah. 
If they are trying to put, no, let us finish this thing. Let us make sure we bring labor. Because tomorrow, we don't know if OB will still come. Because yeah. as it is, they've gone to court. Yeah. So that is on the one hand. Labor is favored right now. Any person who is contesting on that PDP or APC and who does not know that there's a problem, then it's not a politician. Okay. So for me, mm. they must all put their hearts together. Okay. It is in the interest of the governor that the PDP wins the majority in the House of Assembly. Mm. But for me, if we, we, we are honest and we are objective, are you going to the House to go and be fighting the governor? Is it not for the development and of betterment the of the state mm. that we are after? Why must we expect that, oh, uh, the House of Assembly must uh, kotow to the governor? Why must we expect that the House of Assembly must take instructions from the governor? I, I, I believe that we will have a better house if people from the different parties are mixed. Let the people decide who okay. they want. All right. It depends on what you are bringing to the table. table. All right. Let's so if the governor is doing what is right, mm. if you are in labor, you will support. Yeah. If you are in APC, you should support. It is only when you see that what is coming to the table is not in the interest of, of the, the state people. and of your constituency yeah. that you will object. Let, so let, me, take, me, let me take party. let me take some phone calls. It's about uh, the state. As much as time will Hello, good morning. Sonny Gadosa is joining us from uh, Airport Road. Sonny Gadosa, good morning. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Yes, thank you for your patience too. Yeah. I'm actually calling you from the Tower Market. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, please. <laughs> uh, I know Lou Martin is very educated. Yes. But don't learn it. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Sanio. This uh, our studio number is on the screen zero eight zero seven 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 zero three zero zero. Dial the number right now. Let's take your views. Uh, limited one though because of time factor. Hello, caller. Good morning. What's your name? Good morning, Nigeria. Yes, good morning, Doctor. Open secret. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> Open secret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get you one of these days. Please just make it quick. Yes, go ahead. Uh, 
But he can campaign for his political party. He has a right to do that. Thank you, Dr. Opusik. We're delighted to have you join us again. Erevo uh, Martin, quickly, uh, last point on this before we call no, it to wrap. I'm very simple. As I began to lead the campaign, to say, yeah. look, I want, a, I want a quiet at those states. A couple of people reached out to me and said, look, forget about this government, this and this and that. Said, First of all, I'm a pastor. So I can't be part of any arrangement I will bring down any administration. Romans 13 instructs me to say, pray for government mm. as, as much as we can help them in prayer. So I will not be part of any arrangement. Whatever I can do to ensure an administration, especially one that is exiting, and I have not said vote for this or that. I'm simply saying that if I had my personal... Like, let's give him soft landing, yes, stabilize yes, the yes. system. And it's not just for him. Mm. I'm seeing the bigger picture. picture. It's for the peace and tranquility and development of Edo State. Okay. However, that development is perceived. But Amala politics, our Oga Amala politics, they complain to Oba Sanjo about him. Oba Sanjo, Baba is 80. How can you be? This man is living. I see Oba Sanjo knew. Six months later... I did the boot died. And the man said, you can imagine, how can you be fighting a man, quote and unquote, that is living? So for me, the world is soft land. How can we have, not a rubber stamp, but a House of Assembly that is not in the overwhelming majority of the opposition? Mm -hmm. Because we have seen governors who have been impeached or which, where states have been thrown into turmoil because of a particular interest. For me, as a pastor and as, an, as a development person, I don't want that for it. Okay. All right. Uh, Hello, Kola. What's, what's, your, what's your take? Uh, give us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning. What's your name? Okay, I've got this signal that our time is up on the program today. Uh, we had a bit of uh, some hitches here and there, and that uh, it choked up the time. But we want to say big thanks to everyone that made the show a huge success. Uh, Professor Ede Asenogwa, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show and for the useful insight that you gave on the interpretation of Section 134. Of the Constitution, Reverend Luma, thank you educated so much. Educated, Reverend Luma. Thank you so much. <laughs> educated. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not left behind. That's our program today. I want to say big thanks to everyone that made the program a huge success. My name is Sonny Duke Okosun. Have a great weekend. <laughs>